Well, I figured it was about time to go ahead and replace a server that I had been using over here. Um, I was using an HP server, and that was the box that I showed in the uh, earlier videos about uh, the testing with the PCI video card and what kind of benchmarks I got out of it. Um, I turned it back into a server box for a while, and it was just extremely loud. And I decided that the biggest thing I wanted to avoid was the loudness factor, so... I had this server sitting at work, and this is actually a really nice gateway server. It's a model E9220T. Um, I put a DVD drive in it, which I had to replace the uh, little belt on so the door would open and close properly. I also put this uh, front panel temperature monitor on here. Um, just to kind of more or less fill the space that was there. Uh, and I also went ahead and put uh, one of these little Diamond Multimedia USB sound adapters on here. This was shown in uh, one of Max Arcade's videos. It's kind of neat. The only downside to this sound card that I see is the fact that, uh, well, you can see it the way it's oriented. I, it's not facing me. <laughs> um, the the, uh, the little L-shaped adapter here does not pivot or swivel or turn in any fashion. So um, I do have some straight adapters at work, and I think I'm going to go ahead and get one of those sometime so that this thing hangs out over here so I can actually see it. Um, I'm actually really surprised with that. Goodbye, $7 on eBay. It's actually a really good little sound card. Um, but the sound card is not the focus of this video. The focus of this video is installing Zubuntu Linux as a server operating system. Now this isn't going to be a whole walkthrough tutorial on how to do it. Um, but uh, I want to just cover some of the highlights of this and some of the challenges that I had. Installing it was not a big deal. The goals that I have for this server are uh, to be a DHCP, a DNS, uh, gateway firewall, and I also do use this as a workstation if I want to jump on the internet, things like that, watch some YouTube videos or whatever. I don't necessarily want to have to go and turn on one of my other computers because the server is already on. It's just much more convenient to just jump on here and get online when I need to. So. I needed a sound card, which I put in there, and I also put an NVIDIA 8400 uh, GS PCI Express video card, which I had laying around at work. Wasn't doing anything with it, so I threw it in here. Works just fine. Um, the only real major challenging thing that I had was configuring the sharing. Um, everything had to be installed from the Ubuntu repository, so I had to install the DHCP server, um, bind 9 for the DNS server. I installed Webmin in order to be able to configure it all. And then I had to also install the file sharing service on this thing. And that was where I really ran into a problem because a lot of the tutorials online, uh, YouTube videos anyway, and even some message boards, they really didn't seem to tell me everything I really needed to know. Basically some of the problems that I had with Samba file sharing was the security permissions between a Windows box and the Linux box. Kept getting a, uh, security errors, authentication problems and stuff like that. There was a few message boards, some tutorials online, and quite a few YouTube videos that I ended up watching. Uh, in, in order to set up the, the all the services in, in Samba and get it working. While most of the tutorials only went so far as, as to setting this up properly to work with the Windows network, um, I did finally find one that finished off the job and got everything working for me here. Um, so I want to point a few things out here. Um, one of the things that you want to do is to add the NetBIOS name right here. In this case I named it Mars because that's what I call the server is Mars. I've got this whole space solar system thing going on in my network here. Um, and this, so this will allow you to be able to, to find your Linux box by name rather than having to use the uh, IP address. Um, and that's not in every tutorial, so that's something you definitely probably will want to go ahead and add to that. Um, there's also another one down here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, under authentication, 
Uh, security equals share. You want that to be in there. And then uh, down below here, go down to here a bit. At the very bottom of this is where you actually set up your shares at. And in this case, I named them File, Music, Movies, and TV. Uh, most of the files, uh, at least for the, the uh, fi for me, files is basically programs and pictures and uh, things like that. Basically, normal file storage. Uh, music is obvious. Um, so, these two folders, I ended up just copying all the contents from the old server uh, onto the the main hard drive which is a 500 gigabyte hard drive that I put into this um, these two folders only take up about a hundred gig of space so it's really not taking up a ton of room uh, on the main hard drive doing this uh, and then the two down here uh, these are actually the hard drives pulled directly out of the other server without copying anything over they're still on the NTFS format which Ubuntu doesn't seem to have a problem with recognizing or sharing that. But my authentication problems, even though I had done some stuff with the uh, permissions and things like that that were part of the uh, setup guides that I saw, didn't fix the problem with the authentication. What fixed it was adding these three lines at the bottom here available equals yes, public equals yes, and valid user. And in this case, I put guest on there. Um, they do say to use your username here. I tried guess because I don't really want to have to authenticate to my server every time I want to browse the uh, network shares. Um, but even with having guessed here, it still requires me to put in a username and password, which is the local username and password for the Ubuntu box in question. So, unfortunately, um, this doesn't really seem to matter a whole lot but uh, having these three lines in here is what ended up fixing my problem so in your case you probably want to go ahead and use your username here although like I said guest it doesn't seem to really matter if I have guest or the username in there um, the other thing I'm also noticing too is that because I copied all the files over from my uh, NT server um, I'm still getting occasionally problems here um, when I try to load up, say, an executable, come on. Um, so I created a folder called Network Shares under my home folder here. So, like, I'll go in here into my applications, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. And let's say I was just trying to install uh, an older version of uh, PaintShop Pro back on my Windows 8 machine, which has issues of its own, apparently, with Windows 8. Um, but I was, as an example, I was kept running a problem when I double clicked the executable, it would say, uh, you don't have permission to run this. So on the Windows box, even though I went in here, I'll just give you an example, even though I went back here to the main folder and went to properties, permissions, and set the group up as Samba Share, which is correct, um, this, this fixed it for my music in my TV shows because I was having the same problem that didn't fix it for my files and applications so what I had to do on the Windows is uh, basically go in here and on the Windows computer right click and go to properties and then go to security and and go to the advanced tab on the security and then replace child objects and, uh, and down there and I also added everyone uh, full access on the Windows side and then overwrote the existing permissions that were here that was most likely set by the previous Windows machine and now I can access everything just fine on the Windows boxes so there's a few little things I've had to do to make this whole thing work but um, I'm quite thrilled to now be running a Linux box Zubuntu, if nothing, of, of no less. Uh, and I really like Zubuntu. I mean, it's not as flashy as some of the other uh, flavors out there. But I like the lightness of the, op of the uh, user interface. Um, and uh, it still has plenty of functionality. And, you know, for me, it looks good. I went and did a little bit of window transparency and stuff like that on it so like I'll open this one and when I drag it you see how it 
goes transparent there. I did just a little bit of transparency. I didn't want to do too much. So like if I open another uh, window here, see how it's nice and transparent in the background and when I move it around, things like that. I, I like that look a little bit, but um, I'll show you how good this thing actually runs on this. I've got in here a 2.8 gigahertz Pentium 4 uh, socket 775 processor and it's not anything terribly special but it definitely does get the job done so you could say this is a little bit of a test of how it would run on an older machine uh, I went with Zubuntu because I wanted a lightweight desktop let's just watch this one real quick here this is the Macintosh Color Classic, or at least that's what it says on the label. As you'll see later, this one has been upgraded with the logic board from a Macintosh LC575. The color... It actually plays the videos quite well with this video card, so I'm happy with that. Um, my power consumption also went down tremendously. This server is consuming just a little bit under 100 watts of power, which is still higher than I wanted, but... Uh, the old HP server was consuming closer to 300 watts of power. So, that's still a hell of a savings. So that'll conclude this video on my upgrading, or replacing I should say, the previous server that was running Windows Server 2003 with this new one that is running Zubuntu. And these steps uh, should be helpful with anybody running a Ubuntu flavor of some sort if you're looking to do the same thing and want to still be able to use uh, your server as a desktop or perhaps if you want to share files from your Ubuntu desktop to a Windows uh, computer of some sort um, the Samba share thing is definitely kind of tricky as I found out at least on Zubuntu anyway um, but that's uh, that's okay it was a fun learning experience and uh, we'll keep using it thanks for watching everyone